Let's continue with the homework from chapter four uh, with problem 12. Problem 12 does have a word problem um, here. This, should, this word instead of with should actually be without. So that's a pretty big change. Um, I'm going to send you an email about that, but let's take a look at what the problem says. A soil has a specific gravity of solids of 2.72, a void ratio of 0.78, and a water content of 20%. After being oven dried, the weight of the resulting solids is one cubic foot. We're going to complete a phase diagram worksheet for this sample and compute the degree of saturation. And then without completing a new phase diagram worksheet, um, we're going to solve for what the new unit weight will be if it's compacted without a loss of water. So it's going to be compacted with a loss of air, but without losing any water until it becomes saturated. So I apologize for that error there, and I hope that didn't throw people if you were trying to solve this. Okay, let's go ahead and solve this then. Um, we'll just start with the old default values here. Uh, move that down. Um, with with uh, the weight of the air being zero, gamma air zero, and gamma water at 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And I'll go ahead and fill those into the phase diagram here. So we've got zero, zero, and 62.4. We were given the volume of the dried solids, uh, that that was one cubic foot. And so we can also duplicate that. And those were given. So we'll put that in for number four is one and number five just duplicated. Okay, so that's, we can get pretty far just with what we've been given there. Now let's take a look at what else we know. We're given gra uh, specific gravity, void ratio, and water content. I'm going to go ahead and do that void ratio because I know that that is going to give me a relationship between the volume of the voids and the volume of the solids. And I know what the volume of the solids is, so I'll be able to figure out the volume of the voids. So my volume of the voids is going to be my void ratio times the volume of the solids. In this case, it's just um, 0 0.78 void ratio times one cubic foot. And so that's pretty easy. That's going to tell me my volume of the voids is just 0 0.78 cubic feet. And that's number six. Okay, and then let's go on. Um, We'll go ahead and solve that total volume going down the column there. We'll take the volume of the voids and add it to the volume of the solids. That's pretty easy right there, 1.78 cubic feet. And that will be my number seven. And then I can duplicate that for number eight. All right, and you know, up to you what you want to do next. I'm going to go ahead and use that information about specific gravity because I know whenever I know a specific gravity, I can find gamma solids because I'm always given gamma water. So I'll use that next. And that relationship, that specific gravity is gamma solids over gamma water. And so I'm going to solve for gamma solids. It's going to equal that specific gravity times gamma water. In this case, specific gravity was 2.72. And then I've got 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And when I do that math, I get 169.7 pounds. So I figured out my gamma solids. I'll put that in for number nine. Oops, I forgot to put a number for that one. Three, 169.7. All right, um, let's go ahead and find the weight of the solids. We'll just go straight across there. It's just one cubic foot times that 169.7 pounds per cubic feet. So that's a pretty easy one to figure out. Uh, so it's volume of solids times gamma of solids equals weight of solids 
and it's just going to be that 169.7 pounds, and that would be number 10. Okay, for number 11, I'm going to go ahead and use what I know about the water content because I know the water content is a ratio between the weight of the water and the weight of the solids. And now that I figured out the weight of the solids, I can find the weight of the water. So just to remind you, water content is weight of water over weight of solids. And so we're going to solve for weight of water. So it's going to be water content times the weight of solids. So in this case, the water content is 20%, so 0.2. And weight of solids I just found was 169.7 pounds. And when I do that math, um, I'm going to wind up with 33.9 pounds for the weight of water. So that will be number 11, 33.9. I'm always going to remember, I'm always going to round these weights um, to the tenths place gammas to the tenths place, and all the volumes to the hundredths place. That's just kind of the standard that we're adopting here, um, just so we can have all sort of similar answers. <laughs> okay, so that is number 11. Uh, for 12, I'm going to just go ahead and add up that weight column to get a total weight. Uh, so in this case, it's just 33.9 plus 169.7. When I add those together, I'm just going to get 203.6. So it's just the weight of the water plus the weight of the solid. Since my weight of air is always zero, then it's 203.6 pounds. Uh, for 13, I'm going to go ahead and solve for the volume of water. It's really up to you where you want to go next, but I'm going to just go ahead and do that for my 13th step, move that up a little bit. So I'm gonna solve for volume of water. I know volume of water times gamma water equals the weight of the water. Again, just from this fundamental relationship here. So this time I'm gonna solve for volume of water and it's gonna be weight of water divided by gamma water. And in this case, that's 33.9 pounds over my 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And when I put that into my calculator, I'm going to get 0 0.54 cubic feet, taking that out to two decimal places. So we'll put that up here for number 13. And once I found that, I can see I'll be able to fill in this whole column because I can figure out the volume of air. I can do it, you know, looking at my whole column or I can remember that the volume of the voids is going to be the volume of air plus volume of water. So either way, I'm going to go ahead and use that relationship uh, myself to find the volume of air. So for number 14, I'm going to say that the volume of the voids equals the volume of air plus the volume of water. So in this case, to find that volume of air, I'm going to take the volume of voids and subtract the volume of water from it. So that's just this 0.78 minus 0.54, and that's just going to give me 0.24 cubic feet. And that's number 14. Okay, and so I filled everything in. I just have this uh, total gamma to do for my last step here. That'll be my 15. And uh, just as always, I'll use this a fundamental relationship here that volume times gamma, total volume times total gamma equals total weight. Um, here I'm looking for the gamma. So I know that gamma is going to be the weight divided by the volume. In this case, it's 203.6 pounds divided by 1.78 cubic feet. And when I put that into my calculator, I'm going to wind up with 114.4 pounds per cubic foot, cubic feet, uh, 114.4. Okay, so I've completely filled in my phase diagram, but there was one more question that it asked me to do um, for this problem that I didn't solve. Um, I wanted to complete a phase diagram and compute the degree of saturation. So let's go ahead and do that for my last thing here. 
I'm just going to put that at the bottom of my phase diagram. Um, remember your degree of saturation. If you look back to your table um, to get your definition, it's just that volume of water divided by the volume of the voids. So I'm just going to pick values right off my table here to find that. So in this case, it's 0 0.54 cubic feet divided by 0 0.78 cubic feet. And when I put that into my calculator, I'm going to get 0.54 divided by 0 0.78. I get 0 0.69. So I'm going to call that 69% saturated. So definitely more than half. Um, but that's not the end of the problem because remember, there's something more I want to do. I want to now take that sample. It's We just said it's at 69% saturation. I want to get it so it's 100% saturated. And I want to know what its new unit weight is going to be if it's compacted, but it's not going to lose any water. Well, let's think about this. If I have a sample here and I'm going to compact it and I'm not going to lose any water, that means I'm going to have to lose air. And when you think about compaction and kind of um, tamping something down, either your water is going to get squeezed out or you're going to lose some air. In this case, we're not going to lose any water. We're going to lose all of this air. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in a different color here. For this one, my saturation rate is 69%, um, but if my saturation rate is 100%, and hopefully you're remembering this by now, that uh, volume of the water is going to have to equal the volume of the voids. Remember, because every void is going to be filled with water, and it's equal zero. So let's put that up here. This is going to turn to zero, okay, with my saturation rate equal to 100%. And all these voids, <clears throat> all this water is going to move over here. So some of these voids are going to go away. All the voids that were filled with air are going to be compacted down. So my void space is going to decrease by this amount, which is actually the same as my water space. Let's think about this. So right now I have 0.78 cubic feet that's filled with voids, but I'm getting rid of this whole air. It's all going away. So minus 0.24. Well, now I'm just left with 0.54 uh, cubic feet of void space, and that's all filled with water. So it's basically we're taking this volume of the water, and we're putting it all into the volume of the voids here. Okay, so that's how things are changing when it's 100% saturated. That's going to change my total volume. Okay, think about compacting it down. It's not going to take up as much space anymore. So instead of having this 0.78 plus 1, now it's 0.54 plus 1. So my new total volume is going to be 1.54. All right, so I have a new volume of the voids. I have a new volume of air. My volume of water is staying the same, and I'm going to have a new total volume. My weight's going to stay the same, but with this new volume, I'm going to have a new gamma. Because remember, my total unit weight is equal to my weight divided by volume. Well, my volume just changed because I compacted it. So I'm going to expect this unit weight, this density to go up. It's going to be a denser sample. So it's 203.6 pounds now divided by 1.54 cubic feet. And when I go ahead and do that math, let's go ahead and do that. 203.6 divided by 1.54 uh, that's going to be 132.2 uh, pounds per cubic foot. And so you can put that up here if you want to, too, just to be complete, 132.2. So that's the way that that sample is going to change. Um, that's going to be the new unit weight once it's compacted without any loss of water, but all the air has gone away. All right, that's how you figure out homework problem 12.